Hi friends, welcome back to Water Nerds. So glad you decided to join us again. Uh, my name is Kaziah, I'm here with Annalise. Hi. And we're gonna talk about um, uh, the state of Michigan. Like, bro, <laughs> um, the state of Michigan has had a pretty difficult time uh, in regard to water. Um, at first, you know, a few years back, all we heard about was like Flint. Uh, but that was concerning lead. Um, most recently, I guess over the last year, year and a half mm -hmm. or so, it's been more about PFAS, uh, per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. Um, they've had literally, they've literally had crises in, in towns like Parchment, Michigan, uh, Kalamazoo, Ann Arbor. Um, whoa, there's been so many, there's been so many like, um, so much like leg proposed legislation and bills and it's been like, it's been a pretty big deal. Um, you can barely read the news about Michigan or in Michigan without hearing something about PFAS um, and kind of the crazy stuff that's going on there. So, um, Annalise, what is, uh, what's what's happening with, with Michigan mm -hmm. right now? Yeah, so I think you summed it up pretty yeah. well. Um, they're having some serious problems with PFAS and lead is still, of course, an issue mm -hmm. still in Flint and other parts of Michigan, mm -hmm. um, but PFAS is definitely the star of the show right now. Right, right. Um, so yeah, like you said, Ann Arbor, Kalamazoo, excuse me, Kalamazoo, Parchment, mm -hmm. all of those places are having really serious problems with PFAS. And this is one in part due to the fact that companies discharge their effluent into bodies of water. It's been, you know, that's the theme, that's what we do in this country. So of course it's, you know, so many lakes in Michigan and that whole area. So of course they're having higher levels of this contaminant mm -hmm. in their water. Um, but as of recent, a lot of legislation, like you said, is trying to be passed through the state um, legisl legislative office. Mm -hmm. And I don't, people like the press is saying that a lot of it isn't gonna pass. The governor is at the end of his term. So I don't know, but there's some really great legislation on the table. So mm -hmm. one is uh, mandating water testing for child care facilities, mm -hmm. which, you know, shouldn't be happening anyways. But um, and then public school water testing. And then this is really interesting, one that would retroactively allow individuals to seek damages related to deaths or injuries caused by a water emergency. Interesting. So this one is, you know, if you were to get cancer and it was affiliated with PFAS, you would be able to like seek some sort of damages from that. So this is a really interesting bill. So Interesting. So yeah. current sitting governor is Snyder, right? Yeah. And so, but Snyder is in the last part of his, like these lame ducks yeah. in the last part of his term. So I think maybe right before the holidays or maybe immediately after, I think maybe a lot of bills are being presented to him to either yay or nay, mm -hmm. um, just because I don't know who's coming into office um, <laughs> I, I don't know who's coming into office behind him. Um, and a lot of this, a lot of the water crisis kind of happened on his watch. Mm -hmm. So there may be, you know, uh, some obligation from his point to kind of pass some things like that. But there was recently um, something about, so the current, so okay, PFAS is not regulated by any stretch of the imagination. I think there is a um, a recommended mm -hmm. like kind of limit, but it is not on the list of 90 contaminants that are currently regulated by the EPA. Um, states have taken certain actions to make it a, make a state standard and have you know have people have agencies abide by that. Mm -hmm. But uh, for Michigan, I think because it's been such a like a heightened thing and such a I don't I don't want to say state of emergency, but yeah, it's it's been pretty it's been pretty serious. Um, so was it Michigan? I saw an article where someone wanted to change or to lower mm -hmm. the recommended what seven it's seventy parts per trillion. Yeah. They wanted to lower it. Yeah. Um, what is? Do you know anything about that? Like, what was that about? Yeah. So the public health goal in Michigan is seventy parts per trillion, mm -hmm. um, and you know, toxicologists agree that this is just too high. The ATSDR, Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Control, um, released an article or a report over the summer that said that it should be lowered. It should be, you know, 20 parts mm -hmm. per trillion for um, PFOA and PFOS. Mm -hmm. So, of course, that report by the ATSDR 
has no teeth. It does, it's not a regulation. It's just a recommendation right. that you know states can follow if they can afford the water treatment facilities that would you know remove that type of contamination. A lot of states can't do that, so right. they're opting for a higher public health goal. Mm. And but I think that I saw the same article, and I mm -hmm. think that it was a couple um, university professors that you know wrote. This is just too high. Seventy mm -hmm. parts per trillion is far too high for, mm -hmm. you know, anyone to be consuming. So we'll see what they do about that. But again, it's still not federally regulated. Not a lot of states have been able to have a lower threshold than seventy. Right. So I think one thing that would likely be impactful is if, um, by some miracle, PFAS ends up on the list of contaminants regulated by the EPA. Mm -hmm. And then it would kind of, I don't know, I think it would kind of push things along uh, more so than kind of these recommended health goals, because. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, you know, 10 to 20 years out. We, perchlorate was, you know, the PFAS of 20 years ago, and it's mm -hmm. still not regulated. Still not regulated. They're regulated. projecting 2019 is going to be the year for perchlorate, the 91st contaminant, but you know, times of ticking, times people are getting ticking. sick, yeah. you know, we don't really know the health outcomes of PFAS. We just don't. We can like predict things, mm -hmm. you know, we can have extrapolated data from mm -hmm. rats in a laboratory, but we just don't know. Right. We don't know what someone hel someone's health is going to look like 30 years down the road. Right. Right. Um, so question, I noticed a, a, a trend with where there were kind of emergencies, like between Parchment, mm -hmm. Kalamazoo, and Ann Arbor. Um, I know that Michigan itself is a lake state, like, yeah. you know, but these particular towns uh, and cities are closer to lakes, right? They are, so is it our lake, our lake region states more susceptible to something like this? I think in part, yes, mm -hmm. but the reason that those, um, municipalities had a spike mm -hmm. was because that was probably the first time they tested for it. And mm -hmm. they had just become aware for the first time that they had these extremely high right. levels. So they could have been drinking, you know, contaminated water for years without knowing. Mm -hmm. And then someone is like, someone either mandates that they test for it or, you know, they think it's a good idea to start testing for it and they have these super high levels. I think yeah. parchment had levels over like 100 parts per trillion yeah, over they, the summer. Yeah, they shut parchment down. Yeah. Like they're like, don't touch the water. It might have even been higher than 100 parts per yeah. trillion, but they it was really a, bad yeah, over the summer. Yeah, they did a report on that. They, mm -hmm. um, yeah, they shut parchment down. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that PFAS, boy. Um, What's, what are some quick facts about PFAS? Like yeah, so um, it's used in a lot of non-stick, mm -hmm. non, you know, or repellent fabrics mm -hmm. and things like that. So um, cookware, Teflon, firefighting foam is probably the biggest, Definitely. you know, polluter of PFAS um, just because it can just, there's so much of it present in the environment and it can disperse so quickly. Right. So that's kind of... That's going to be the next thing that we're going to kind of take on, I think, is the right. firefighting foam and impact on firefighters' health and things like that, because it is important. We need firefighting foam, mm -hmm. but we, you know, we have to find Not an alternative. Not at the expense of the firefighters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, PFAS, it's, it, it spreads easily and it doesn't break down. That's, yeah. That's, so it doesn't, like, water doesn't destroy it or anything right. like that. It just... Mobile and persistent is the... Terms so it can you know disperse go a long distance without breaking down at mm -hmm. all and then it also travels in the environment like you said it right. just goes right right through water just you know so here we are <laughs> um, we are trying to stay on top of it and stay on top of just um, anything concerning drinking water uh, water quality that's what we're here for. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. You can visit our website. It's www.hydravive.com. Um, and you can click on the live chat feature and you will talk to a live person um, every single time to answer what questions you may have about water quality or 
um, you may want to email us. Email us at hello at hydraviv.com. Again, a live person every time, and we're more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Annalise, thank you. Uh, for the information, and we'll see you soon.